Looking back at the 19th century, it's possible to say that the extreme popularity of the serial novel, the novel released in installments over time, was inevitable. In London, changing economics were creating the perfect conditions for this to happen. Thousands of people were moving into the city, literacy among the lower and middle classes was increasing, and new printing and distribution technologies were coming into their own. But the magic that made Serial such a huge success wasn't only in the conditions of the times, and publishers like Chapman and Hall knew that. It was also in the genius of upstarts, like the one they chose, a young writer named Charles Dickens. Chapman and Hall commissioned Dickens to write a few sporting stories to be released with sketches done by the artist Richard Seymour. Altogether, the project was called The Posthumous Papers of the Pickwick Club, or The Pickwick Papers for short. The first part was a horrendous failure. Only 400 copies were sold. After the second part, Seymour committed suicide and had to be replaced. It wasn't until the fifth installment, when Dickens introduced a funny working class character named Sam Weller, that the project struck gold. Weller was a massive hit, and after the insistence of the readership, the character was expanded throughout the rest of the series, launching its sales from 400 to 40,000 per installment. Thanks to Dickens, thanks to publishers like Chapman and Hall, thanks to new printing presses and liberal education and railways, the serial novel dominated the world of literature for the next 60 years. And though most novels these days aren't published like the Pickwick Papers were, the genre of serialization and it is a genre, has proven to be remarkably strong, flourishing in almost every storytelling medium. And this is no accident. As Jennifer Hayward notes in her incredible book, Consuming Pleasures, the serial is sort of the perfect form for capitalism. It captures readers with the promise of more, constantly delaying gratification, and this makes it very commercially effective. And for the same reasons, for its appeal to mass market consumers, serials have been castigated by critics from the jump. Before Dickens became a household name, high society reviewers raked his work through the mud, and the same kind of treatment has been meted out on every new incarnation of the serial, whether it's comics, the serial films of the 40s, pulp novels, soap operas, or the endless sequels of Hollywood blockbusters. Somewhere in space, this may all be happening right now. Star Wars holds, I think, an interesting place in the history of the serial, a history that began with Dickens. And like Dickens, George Lucas is a special kind of visionary. Going against the grain of gritty, realistic films that dominated the 1970s, Lucas devised a sweeping space adventure epic with broad themes influenced by the first generation of film serial like Flash Gordon. And he was shrewd enough to understand the advantages of serialization. When it came up to doing the contract for the film, I knew that what I really had to do was to protect the unwritten part, the other two parts of the script. The truth is that all serials share a group of common features and characteristics, going all the way back to the Pickwick Papers. Like Dickens stories and comic book universes and Star Wars serials tend to feature giant casts of characters, and those characters tend to resemble the mass public that consumes them. Over time, and often far too slowly, serials trend toward diversity. And because of the massive casts, serials also have lots of subplots, and the main plots often feature surprising reversals and twists and revelations that keep the audience reaching for the next installment. Now, this can make for cliche and hackneyed storytelling, like in the case of soap operas, which reconstructed the form to the point of delaying all conclusions infinitely. But even soap operas demonstrate what is probably the two most important features of serials. The creation of interpretive communities and their sensitivity to the audience's desires. A lot of the criticism of Dickens' work centered around its addictive quality, that the books took their readers out of everyday life. But the truth was the opposite. Serials created social bonds around the content in question, acting, in this case, against the alienating effects of capitalism and the Industrial Revolution. What's more, within this space, even the lower classes 
had a forum for engaging in political discourse. Discussing what you thought about Bleak House or Oliver Twist was a way of debating social norms. When The Force Awakens came out last year, its emphasis on practical effects and tactile imagery was as much a result of the audience's referendum on the prequel films as the expansion of the Sam Weller character was for Dickens in The Pickwick Papers. But this relaunch of the Star Wars serials strikes me as something new under the sun. Like soap operas, it's promising to be endless. Like the Marvel film franchise, it's promising to be connected and intertwined. But unlike most of the comic films, so many of the stories and characters have yet to be written, and it's going to be the first film serial in which subplots are going to be told as dedicated features in their own right in the anthology series. This means opportunity for audiences. The so-called new golden age of TV is almost exclusively down to serialized shows that up their game because that's what audiences demanded. The new Star Wars franchise is primed to explode in a thousand directions, and right now, at the beginning, is when we can help to write the rules for what kind of serials that we want to see. A new incarnation of serialization is here for film, 180 years after the Pickwick Papers were first published. That's a long history, so why not mine it for all the best qualities of this resilient and receptive genre? Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I really want to recommend Jennifer Hayward's book, Consuming Pleasures. If you want to know more about the history of serialization, not just in novels, but in comics and soap operas, it is required reading. I loved it so much, so I'll put a link in the description below. Also, thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Um, if you don't know, Squarespace helps you make really sleek, intuitive websites without having to know coding. They do all the work for you, really. Um, and you can get a free domain name if you sign up for a year, and if you go to squarespace.com and use the offer code NERDWRITER, you can get 10% off your first purchase. So thank you so much. I'll see you guys next Wednesday. Squarespace, you should.